How you doing? This is Will from Will Development, and this is part four of why your stones aren't coming out right. In this episode, I want to talk about putting the concrete actually into your mold and proper practices for this. Now, because I make so many stones and I actually sell them, I have to go to a different level of quality than say the average person. This isn't to say that if I did the practices I'm gonna talk about in a minute, it wouldn't yield good stones. For about six months in the beginning, I did these exact practices and it yielded great stones that are still being used today. But I need to be able to work it fast, get it done fast because people are relying on me to get back to training. I'm gonna go over the things you want and need when you're gonna be pouring concrete into your Atlas stone mold. One of the best things you're gonna need is something to pick the concrete up with. Trying to use a shovel and pouring it into that, into the hole in the top of the mold, you're gonna have a bad time. It's not gonna work, it's gonna pour around everywhere, you're gonna get all these little aggregates everywhere, you're gonna end up wasting a lot of concrete, as we have done. Even using a small shovel, I forget what it's called, I think it's a trowel shovel or something like that, really thin, they use it in gardens. It's a gardening shovel. Even using a gardening shovel is gonna be challenging to get the concrete to pour in there every time. What I did is I just went out, bought a 99 cent funnel and cut off the bottom and basically made the hole bigger. And then I took this little piece of, this little plastic cup I had laying around the house and I used that to scoop in and pour it in. Makes it go by a lot faster, makes me waste a lot less concrete. Now, how do you get the concrete to settle? The cheapest way, right here, using your palms. Assuming you've got your stone, your mold, put together correctly, that's a different video series. You should be able to just take your palms and sort of tap the sides of the stone mold and get the concrete to settle. Is this gonna give you the best yield stone? Hell no. Is this gonna get all the bubbles out? Hell no. Pretty much nothing gets all the bubbles out. But you're still gonna to wanna to settle that concrete manually instead of letting gravity do the job because it's gonna come out really shitty if you don't. Option two for getting your concrete to settle, if you got a little bit more money, maybe you got three bucks to go to Harbor Freight and get one, get a rubber mallet. And lightly tapping the sides of the mold after every bag you pour about 50 times, just light taps, light taps. It should sound kind of like that when you hit it on the mold, just little claps against it. Don't try to bang it, you'll end up popping your mold open, or worse, breaking it. Just light little taps with a rubber mallet all the way around it. It's gonna help it settle. And I recommend doing this after every bag, whether you're using your palms or a mallet. Option three, little higher end, maybe you work with concrete already, maybe you've got one laying around. A concrete vibrator is, it's changed my world when it comes to making stones. After every bag I pour in, all I have to do is snake down my concrete vibrator, hit it, and you can literally watch all the bubbles slowly come out. It takes about 30 seconds to, to two minutes before all the bubbles come out of each bag. But I know for a fact it's increased my stones on top of the fact it's allowed me to make sure that I'm putting as much concrete into the mold as possible. That's important. Now I mentioned it before in another video but mixing your concrete. Honestly I still use a wheelbarrow and a shovel. You can use a hoe, concrete hoe if you want. Doesn't make any difference to me. I don't recommend going out and renting a concrete mixer for the weekend. It's a lot of money for something that you could really save. I mean hell I do these things pretty much every weekend I'm pouring stones and I still can't justify getting a concrete mixer because they're not that great, especially when you can only do one bag at a time, and especially since you still have to take them out cup by cup and put it in there. Because if you try to pour it right out of a concrete mixer into the mold, you're gonna have a bad time. Be sure you're putting your concrete in in a manner that's acceptable, and be sure you're tapping down after every single bag. And when you get to the top of the mold, and you're running out of room, it's a different story, but basically you just keep putting in concrete, slowly tapping it down, more concrete, tap it down. You may even have to do it by hand and put it in, tap it down. But remember, the concrete is always gonna sink. No matter what method you use, it's always gonna settle just a little bit more. So once you fill your mold to the brim, come back out after about 20 minutes and put a little bit more on top. I usually say about a palm full, right on top of it, and sort of spread it around. And I guarantee you after two days, you'll still see that little center has settled down just a little bit. Is this gonna be a problem when you come to pop your mold? Not really, just chisel it away, it'll pop right out, I promise you, I do it all the time. Thanks for watching, be sure to stay tuned for part five, where I'm gonna talk about curing, not drying. If you don't, then what's your excuse?